Welcome to Podcasts, recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcast, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living. to the Friends Band, Ken Brewer, Jim Solberg, and Don Schultz. Good morning, everyone, and good morning to our Facebook friends. Let's stand and sing our opening song today. I mean, it's going to be really hard to not be going back to the table, right? All the goodies. Oh, Girl Scout cookies. Okay. All right. Get hang, on, I'll, hang on. I'll be right back. Huh? I'll, I'll be right back. Oh, can't, yeah, let's just talk amongst yourselves while we... All right. So our opening song is on your, I believe it's a yellow sheet of paper. Those are the songs that we sing during service. And so if you want to know the words, please reference it. But yes. All right.
Yes, my friends, may the light of the Spirit shine on now and forever. Welcome to the Portland Center for Spiritual Living. We are a science of mind community that teaches spiritual principles to transform your life and make the world a better place. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, know that you are welcome here. All that we ask is that you stay open to the possibility of changing your entire life simply by changing your mind. My name is Sean A.B. Larkin. I serve as a licensed spiritual practitioner here. It is my honor to welcome each and every one of you here today. If you are new to the center and in person, there are welcome packets on the back table of the sanctuary. They look just like this. And for our global audience, that same information is available on our website, cslportland.org, under the About Us menu tab. Either way, you'll find a great deal of information about who we are, what we stand for, and how we might serve you on your sacred spiritual journey. I have a few announcements to highlight today. There are many exciting things going on in the center. We aren't just open from 11 to noon on Sundays, folks. There are many ways to engage. Uh, right here, right now, our Sunday service is always here in person at the center, and we also broadcast it live on our Facebook live stream, 11 a.m., all times Pacific Standard. You can also hear these retroactively on our YouTube page and the podcast that's always hosted on the website. Uh, this upcoming Wednesday night, the meditation on Zoom at 7 p.m. is hosted by me, and I am sharing the Celtic consciousness that I had in my pilgrimage to Ireland, training under a practitioner of that tradition, will be surveying uh, several of their techniques, their worldviews, and then looking at how science of mind informs that practice in a modern setting. There are also online Zoom groups for the Social Justice Book Club Group, Social Justice Group, our 12-step program for women, and our Spirits Lunch Bunch. You can read more about them and attain the Zoom links again on our website. Uh, now we have some educational offerings coming up. We have a half-day workshop entitled Beads of Grace, which is being held upstairs in our classroom on Sunday, June 4th, right after the celebration service. In this workshop, Reverend Catherine Bonin is guiding us in the use of beads and spiritual practices among nine different religions and spiritual traditions. Plus, you'll experience the delight of creating your very own strand of beads for spiritual mind treatment. Advanced registration is required and includes a light lunch. Details on the website. For all of us who want to get a jump start on scheduling our summer activities, information about all of our summer term certified classes and workshops being offered are now posted on the website. Again, cslportland.org. We are encouraging members to apply to the new minister selection committee. The deadline is May 21st, and this is to ensure that we have people involved in this process that are dedicated and reliable to find that next new minister. We've created our covenant co-creation. That was kind of the job description. Now we need a group of people that will receive applicants and kind of look at them and help us file it down to that set of people that the community will actually review. So it's a very excellent opportunity. There is a sign-up sheet on the back, so I invite you, if you feel called, to do that sacred service for our community. All are welcome. Where am I? Ah, we have a new fundraising committee to consciously co-create the realization of our abundance. The sign-up sheet is in the back. Camp Cedar Ridge, the summer camp out in Vernonia, Oregon, that is run by the Centers for Spiritual Living, is having their forest labyrinth rebuilt. This is happening May 19th through the 21st. You can stay overnight or you can go out for a day. The teens actually built a acre and a half meditation labyrinth. Think about that for a moment. That's the size of four of our sanctuaries for sacred service, and we're rebuilding that uh, so people from around the world can come and have deep practice. Special opportunity, more information on a link on the website. Our flowers today are courtesy of, wait, I forgot to clarify, give me a shout out. Cat Jacobs, yes, as always. Beauty is a spiritual principle even if I stumble with it. <laughs> it's actually better that way. Very good. Today our music features LaRonda Steele and our wonderful friends band. Yes. We're so blessed to have that high vibration with us, so blessed. Today's message is Discovering What You Believe by Reverend Dr. Ruth Miller. Please give us a hand. And also, uh, today after service, there is a new membership gathering happening. There has been sign up, but today if you decide, you know, I'm curious about what it means to be a member of this community. You are welcome to join us upstairs. There is food and refreshments, and that will be going on from 12.30 until 2.30 p.m. Come with your questions. We are here to engage you, to help you find out if this is the right place to root. So please join us. And now, something I'm very excited to do with all of you. I'm going to invite all of you. We have this 
new minister, sacred covenant, easy prayer. Let's take a moment to feel the quality of the paper. For those of you online, we, we really splurge. It's like cardstock. So I was honored to be a part of the team that made this. So this is a very high consciousness prayer. And this is a prayer aligning all of our consciousnesses to invite from the oneness to guide the perfect new minister for us. So I'm going to invite us to read it all together. And those of you online, uh, you can join in. This document is also on the website. And you know it's okay if we are not in perfect unison. If you want to stand, go for it. My new minister, sacred covenant, easy prayer. There is only one life. This life is good. This life is God. This life is my life now. In knowing that I am one with this life that is God, I therefore know that I am one with all of its blessed expressions, which includes the presence of a new minister for my beloved spiritual community. Because I know that the highest purpose of my new minister is to express spirit, I therefore know that my new minister is a revelation of spirit as wisdom. I further know that my new minister is a revelation of that which has been promised by God, for it is written, to realize that God is ever present, ever available, is to know that all the wisdom, intelligence, and power of the universe is right where you are. As I stand in agreement with my beloved community, I see my new minister before me as lighting this safe space in unity, love, and belonging. I now intend to experience my new minister in full cooperation and agreement with my community, knowing this truth about myself. For I am inspired to align with divine wisdom so that all around me feel uplifted, strengthened, and loved. I am calling forth the awareness of oneness as the source of universal truth. I am demonstrating the power of love in leading and guiding PCSL in its expression of wholeness and abundance. I'm ex expressing passion for providing broad educational opportunities for spiritual growth and experience, both in person and virtually. I am nurturing modern families, engaging our communities, and standing up for a diverse, equitable, and inclusive society. As I now accept the highest expression of a new minister into my life, I know that they will be revealed in a way that will express spirit and serve the highest and greatest good for all who are touched by their presence. I am grateful God is gracious and so it is. Just the power of stating our truth together. Just feel that. How special that was. Thank you for joining us in that. And thank you those of you online and those of you across time that joined us. Because there's probably people that are watching the podcast later that are praying with us from the future to right now. This message transcends spirit and time. And so it is. Yes, yes, yes. Now, we can sit back, relax, because I know that somewhere between the music, the meditation, and the message is exactly what your heart came to receive today. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, community. Oh, my. This is mm, a special moment in time. <laughs> so let's breathe together. Mm. Settle down into our hard spaces as we enter our sacred time of meditation together. We sing, we pray, and we meditate. the new I accept 
a new way of thinking. I embrace the new, I accept a new way of thinking. I accept. to this present moment, yes to the discovery of that which is new. For I know that there is only one thing, one power, one presence, one love, one joy, one vital energy that is constantly blossoming forth with new expression. And because I know that I'm a part of this, I know that everyone hearing this prayer is a part of it, that newness is blossoming through us right here, right now. And as we say yes to the newness within us, to that new good, I know that spirit guides you to that new expression. Know that this is good because it is God. And I give thanks for this good blossoming forth through each one of us. And I release this prayer into the action of the law, which works by principle through the intonation of our word. And so it is. And as we go into the silence, I invite you to rest in the part of you where love blossoms and know that you are good. Welcome back from the silence. Beautiful song written by Ricky Byers. Finally cried 
I've been waiting all the times I've been here to get to work with this woman. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a treat, a real treat. My goodness, what a marvelous array of riches this community is. Yes? Yes. yes. yes, yes. <laughs> truly, truly. Your new minister is very, very lucky. <laughs> yeah. 
So when I was asked what I was going to talk about today, I was handed this marvelous packet of things to think about and include, and, and I really appreciate that. That's another richness of this organization. And one of the lines in it is, my inward journey and outward experience are in perfect alignment. My inward journey and outer experience in perfect alignment, yes. Well, what that means is, whatever's going on out there, it's what's going on in here. Ow. Because yeah. <laughs> out there isn't always heavenly. What does that tell me? <laughs> the <demonstration. Yeah. laughs> There's a power out there. <laughs> and in here. <laughs> so, if I really accept this statement, then I really need to accept that whatever I think is going on out there is actually going on in here, right? Now, I've touched on this a few times before. And I'm going to spend a lot more time on it today because it's really, really, really important that we get that our inner and outer experience are totally in alignment and always have been. So how can we deal with that? What can we do about that, right? How do I know that what I believe? You know, as I said in the write-up, I've been told to say a lot of things about what I believe. And as I said in the write-up, they haven't always turned out to be quite that way <laughs> as we get you know, through this wonderful life. Hmm. Well, if my outer experience and my inward life are in perfect alignment, then I know exactly where to look. I will see what I believe. I experience what I believe, right? So if you want to know what you really deep down believe, look at your circumstances. Our circumstances always show us what we believe, regardless of what we affirm, regardless of what we pray, regardless of what we tell other people, regardless of what we tell ourselves, <laughs> what's going on around you. Who are the people around you? What are those people saying? Not just what am I saying, what are they saying? Because what they are saying to me is what I believe, even if I don't like what I'm hearing. <laughs> right? Ouch. Yeah. What are your finances, your relationships, your health? What do they look like? What do they feel like? Oh, good, if I stand here, I can see all of you. <laughs> yes. What do they show me about what I have been believing? What I have been thinking and feeling right below the surface, and maybe even a lot deeper than that. You know, those of you who studied Abraham Hicks, you know, you've done that whole thing. And she makes the point that if you aren't in perfect alignment with what you are calling for, it's not going to come in a hurry. <laughs> right? Yeah. So look at this covenant. Is there anything in this covenant that does not ring perfectly true for you? Because if it doesn't, then there is a belief in each of the people present who feel that, oops, that doesn't quite feel right, or that feels like a stretch, or, ooh, that would be nice, but really? That's my favorite one. <laughs> okay? All right, so then our, our goal is to find, yeah, to discover, not only by what we're seeing out there, but what we are reacting to. Right? What triggers us? What pushes our buttons? What words cause us to go, mm? 
right? What presence, what people cause us to go, uh, 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 I don't think so, <laughs> right? If it's all one, then that must be my belief showing me something, right? Yeah. So a long time ago, in the mid-1800s, a young man in his 30s was diagnosed with consumption, and he was wasting away. And the doctors gave him all kinds of medications, and they just made it worse. None of us have had that experience. <laughs> and, well, he found that that very sick body got healed by a very mental process. Well, in a way, it was a physical process. He went for a carriage ride. Some guy hit the horse on the rump in the carriage for a few miles, and he came back healed. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and it wasn't just that temporary thing of the adrenaline got pumping and the symptoms went away. Some of us have had that, right? <laughs> no, they never came back. So he got interested in a variety of things. He was of an inventive sort of mind. He has a couple of patents. His name is Phineas Parkhurst Quimby. <laughs> He was an inventive guy, he was a clockmaker, and he used the scientific method pretty consistently in almost every area of his life, and particularly in this one. <laughs> this one was a puzzle. And he tried all kinds of things, and a year or so after his amazing experience, a guy came to town who had studied with Mesmer and started teaching everyone about Mesmerism, and Quimby learned about Mesmerism. And you know, in the winter in New England, there isn't much to do, but it's a lot easier to... <laughs> but interestingly, it's a lot easier to travel by sleigh than it is on muddy roads by cart. Makes sense? So they all, all the, the people who went around to different communities did it in the wintertime. So he got together with a young man, and the two of them would go around from town to town on their sleigh through the winter. And they would demonstrate this amazing thing called mesmerism. And the young man, whose name was Lucius Burkhard, Lucius was this amazing subject. He was the kind of guy that you could look at him and go into trance. <laughs> <laughs> and he went into trance, and he would do, they did the stage thing that people used to do. But every now and then, Lucius would say, hey, you know that guy you're waiting for who's on that ship? He'll be here in three weeks. Or, you know that necklace you've been missing? It's up in the attic in the third drawer of the dresser. Out of nowhere. That woke Phineas up. <laughs> By the way, Phineas was known as Park. So Park began to think about what was really happening here. It wasn't just this animal magnetism liquid thing that the mesmerist thought. It was something else. And he tried an experiment. He imagined a roaring lion coming onto the stage while Lucius was in trance. And Lucius got up and ran away. <laughs> wow. Something's going on here, right? So very soon after that, they were getting, they were done with some trip, and Quimby was sitting in his office or in, in his room, and he was having difficulties getting packed up because, well, he hurt. He had a kidney problem now. The medication they gave him for the consumption had destroyed his kidney. <laughs> And Lucius, coming in to say goodbye, said, you know, I can fix that kidney problem, which Park had never mentioned. <laughs> he says, I can do that. And he said, just let me put my hands on your back. You've got one kidney hanging on by a string, and the other one's half gone. Let me put my hands on your back. Bingo. Done. Never had the symptoms again. Quimby stopped using mesmerism at that point, and never again hypnotized anybody. 
However, very soon thereafter, he opened an office, and over the next 12 years, 12 to 14, depending on who's counting, 12,000 people were able to be relieved of their symptoms because Phineas Parkhurst Quimby stood there, sat there with them, and said, you know what the minister told you about hell and damnation? You know what the doctor told you about your symptoms? They're wrong. Let me show you in the Bible how they're wrong. Let me show you by experience and by logic how they must be wrong. Three to six sessions were normal, sometimes only one, and people would walk out with no more symptoms. And Quimby became absolutely convinced that every physical ailment was a function of our beliefs. He also was very angry at ministers and doctors. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do about all that? I mean, we all grew up in this culture, this world, and we're all getting flooded with all kinds of statements about what's real and what isn't. Well, we have already saying, let's see, I accept the new. <laughs> I embrace the new. I accept a new way of thinking. Oh. So I need to somehow uncover all that stuff that's gotten buried since I came into the planet. Hmm and accept something new instead of it. And I love new thought. I mean, it has been my life for 30 plus years since I was ordained and before. So let's say 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> and what I know is I can't just add new thoughts on top of that structure of beliefs. I can affirm the kind of sort of whittle away at the iceberg, <laughs> but they don't necessarily change those underlying beliefs. And what I've learned personally and through my studies is that it either takes a huge event to wipe out <laughs> the past, and replace it with the new, which is what a lot of the traumas that we have experienced and a lot of those diagnoses I call wake-up calls are about. To go, oh, I can't do that anymore. I can't live that way anymore. And begin to replace them with a new set of ideas, right? And then we use affirmations to reinforce that. But for most of us, that doesn't happen. Most of us get to look at our world and go, that's not what I want, whatever that is, right? That's not feeling heavenly. And in fact, my way of teaching and thinking is, if it doesn't feel heavenly, it's an opportunity. It's showing me some belief, some idea, some memory that I have held on to that is still energizing me to move in that direction, to bring into my world those kinds of things. Yeah? All right, it's an opportunity. Now I can see, oh, I must believe that. I must believe that. Huh. So, the difficulty with most of new thought is they don't give us a tool for dealing with them. Unless you studied Emma, Emma Curtis Hopkins, lesson two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> lesson one is stating everything that we know to be true, just as we do for the beginning of a treatment, and as we have been this whole service. We state what we know to be true, and lesson two is, oh my goodness, look what just came up when I said all that. Look at what feelings are, yes, maybe, or no, I don't really think so, or gee, I wish it would, or all those other feelings like, uh-uh, not happening, not in my world. <laughs> right? All of those feelings are those buried beliefs. And so lesson two is the process 
of literally taking each belief and seeing logically and emotionally how it cannot be true in the same way that Quimby helped his patients see that it could not be true and begin to think in terms of truth, in terms of wellness, in terms of wholeness, in terms of love, instead of in terms of whatever it was that they had been taught. Now, when I had a wake-up call and six-month prognosis, one of the things that I realized, thanks to all the people in my world that had pointed me to different things over the years, was that I needed to undo the emotional basis for the physical symptoms, right? And almost everyone I know who's diagnosis of something that was supposed to be terminal turned around did in fact undo the emotional basis for the symptoms. So that was helpful. So I did some processes and I've written them up in various books, but I did some processes that ultimately caused me to get to the place where as The Course in Miracles says, instead of the issue between us, I saw only light and love. So if I was remembering a three-year-old incident or a 15-year-old incident or a 20 or a 21 or 20s, any point along my life, and it's interesting about these beliefs that are really, really deep, they happen over and over and over again in our worlds, right? So I call them our patterns, and our patterns are built on those very fundamental beliefs. So if I can get to the original experiences for those patterns, and I can bring myself to be done with all of the emotions, and bring myself into the love and the light and the knowing that everything that we are ever doing is an exchange of love, even though I haven't always seen it that way. <laughs> I need to get to the place where I can. And when I can, there is this amazing sense. It's a sense of power. It's a sense of grace. And I can claim that which I know to be true through my spiritual understanding and replace that which I am releasing with this new thought. I'm replacing those old ideas and beliefs with this new one that is in alignment with and hopefully is a statement of capital T truth. Ah. Yes. <coughs> So how do we do that? Everyone's going to find their own path. Many of us have learned little techniques along the way, rapid eye therapy, right? Breathing, going for wild horseback rides. <laughs> Whatever it is that allows us to literally feel and see and know in our inner awareness that that which was part of who I believe myself to be is no longer part. It's out there. And in fact, when I'm doing this work, I'll get in there and I'll get all worked up, all the emotions and all the stuff that's there. And you did that and you said that and all that stuff. You know, we've all got some of that. And I would, I'll get there and then I'll go, okay. I'll do it until I am drained. Literally, I'm lying on the floor. I've got nothing left. <laughs> and at that point, I write it all and I rip it up and I burn it. And then I scoop up all the yucky energy in the room <laughs> into an imaginary big black bag. <laughs> and I roll it up a ramp on a rocket ship. And then I do the countdown. And I fire that rocket ship into the sun. So it's transformed into the healing light that supports all humanity. <sighs> 
Not part of me anymore. Well, 80% of it. <laughs> In a few months, it comes back. But it's only 20%. I may not recognize that because it feels just as intense, but it only lasts a little while and it only goes a little much. And so I, guess what? Do it again. <laughs> ah, another 80%. Well, that puts me down to four. I've only got 4% of the energy that I did have on it. And when it comes back around, I might even recognize it. <laughs> and I do it again. For those of you who don't do the math, it's 0.16 that's left. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, 80% of 0.16 isn't much. <laughs> so by that point, the next time it comes around, it kind of just went right on by, and I remember it later. Uh, oh, <sighs> I am free of the belief and that area of my world that led to that kind of not heavenly experience. Yes. And then someone tells me their story of how it's in their life. Guess what I get to do? The same process. Because it's now another layer out, right? But it's still in my world. So I'm going to do the same process for me and for them. Now, when I am functioning as a practitioner and doing treatments with people, my job is to be as free of that as possible. And remember, I have been replacing the issue with light and love every step along the way. I have been claiming truth that is light and love. So if I can get my Self, my feeling self into that place of the light and the love and the truth, then whatever is down there is not affecting the treatment. And what I am doing is actually cleansing my own deeper belief stuff whenever I do a treatment for anyone, anything, any situation. I strongly recommend doing treatments. <laughs> because they are the chipping away at the iceberg that actually can do something. They're actually melting away the iceberg. Maybe that's why all the icebergs are melting. <laughs> We're all doing our treatments. <laughs> For those of you who are worried about climate change, you know, I, I was writing papers on it 50 odd years ago, and think about it. Does anyone have to trudge through the snow in heaven? Have you ever heard of any description of heaven, including snow and ice? I don't know. Maybe the earth, earth is returning to the Garden of Eden. And we don't have to be so concerned. And while I'm doing that, I'll just explain that what I think is happening is the equatorial band is expanding in both directions. So they're growing grapes in Sweden. They are. <laughs> what do we really believe? Did I just touch on a belief? Did I just touch on something that was generating some fear? I hope I've begun to give you something to replace that fearful belief with. Maybe the earth is becoming the Garden of Eden once more. Now, Zach Bush, one of my favorite online MDs, absolutely accepts this because he says we have put so much carbon into the atmosphere that all kinds of plants have lots to breathe. So we may see a new carboniferous era as a result of what we've done. We just have to figure out how to get the water to them. And they're doing that in lots of places. But that's another talk for another time. <laughs> So when we experience in our inner world any distress, we are experiencing it in our outer world. That's just how it is. And the way to not experience it in the outer world is to clean it up in the inner world. And lesson two, 
to release, to deny, I don't like that word because denial, you know, it's that river in Egypt, um, to negate, <laughs> but to dissolve, to dissolve those beliefs that have framed my experience thus far. Ah, and replace them with the truth of the love and the wisdom and the light that is present in every being I encounter, that is how everyone is working together in their organizational settings, that is transforming every institution on our planet. That is what we are moving into as we dissolve the old. But then something happens. The world comes unglued because it was held together by our old beliefs. And that can be very scary. That's what friends are for. Friends who know the truth and hold it while our world that was built and held together by those old beliefs and ideas gets to fall apart so it can come up in its new way. Can you feel that? I know when Reverend Larry left, it felt like everything was coming unglued. What are we going to do? Are we going to be able to make this work? Oh, I don't know. Well, I got to tell you from the outside, it's looking really good. <laughs> you guys are gluing it together in a whole new way. And the minister that comes to this congregation will be very different from Reverend Larry and will be the perfect minister for who you are and who you are becoming. That is how it works. That is how the universe has formed and unformed and formed again since the beginning. That is spirit manifest in and through and as each of us and all of us together. And we just keep letting go of those old beliefs and replacing them with the new, the new heavenly world that is in us and ready to ex be expressed through us, as us, with us, and for all beings, always. Thank you very much. You guys are good. I think I get to do a prayer. Is that all right? All right. May I have a sip of water? <laughs> there. That's a power. Great power. <laughs> well, the power is with us, yes? Did everyone celebrate May the 4th? May the 4th be with you? And also with you. Thank you. <laughs> It is a treat. <laughs> so in this lovely light spirit, <laughs> let us get in touch with the light <laughs> that is and feel it moving in and through us. Yes? yes? Yes. It's never the words, it's the feelings. The best the words do is bring us to the feelings. So let us feel that light, that love, that warmth. Mm -hmm. That wisdom and that power that is here and now and always. Feel it moving in us and through us. Feel it moving in this space, filling this space. As we go into that knowing that is who and what we truly are. Ah. <sighs> And in that knowing, we can relax and release anything that no longer serves us and feel the presence that is unfolding here 
and now and always. For so it truly is. And so I claim with that ancient Hebrew word, Amen. Thank you. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right, my friends. This is our time of sacred giving. Thank you so much for your gracious giving. Your financial gifts enable us to be in this beautiful space. Enjoy wonderful music, hear inspirational speakers, and provide online viewing and support community nonprofits. Your gifts allow this powerful teaching to be known so we can continue to grow and be an expression of spirit in this world. Will the others please step forward? Let us accept and bless our offering together as a call and response. I bless these sacred gifts. I bless these sacred gifts. Given graciously with love. Given graciously with love. These gifts bless, heal, and prosper all they touch. These gifts bless, heal, and prosper all they touch. In giving, I am grateful to be richly, lavishly, and abundantly blessed. In giving, I am grateful to be richly, lavishly, and abundantly blessed. And so it is. And so it is. And now please again welcome our musicians. All right. Um, the ushers. I'm going to... I want everybody to see this. Look at here. <laughs> How you do that? Yes. This is my spiritual community, and I want to see the lights on and 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 bless the the people who are of service in this um, beautiful community. So I give back by, of course, being a part of the music team, but also financially because this blesses me. It blesses my soul. So I want to thank. Marcy and Michelle and Paulette for joining me on this song and our sound person Rick Smith and our wonderful AV person Mark Pettijohn and all of the volunteers that make this happen for us each Sunday and during the week too. So we send a big blessing out to you and we invite y'all to get up and dance with us. We fixing the rock and roll. All right. God has made me 
through any trouble right now or you want some support moving into the next stage of your being, re be aware that there are practitioners around. They'll be around for your, uh, what, the minute, one minute miracle. The one minute miracle, I love that. Here at the front of the platform at the end of the service. We also have the prayer request cards at the table. When you fill one out, the whole ministry team participates in making that happen. And for you guys online, you can always submit one through the website, ah, cslportland.org. Now, you can stand or sit, but this is time. Something wonderful is flowing through me right now. Something wonderful is flowing through me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. And life is in all my affairs. Life is in all my affairs. I think it. I think it. I believe it. I believe it. I accept it. I accept it. Just the way I am. Just the way I am. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Woo! Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 
All right, you are never alone and the divine presence of love is within you always, anytime, anywhere. When forgetfulness comes upon you, simply go within and remember that you are truly, always, you are loved, you are beloved, you are love and you are loving, for that is so. And in gratitude for this remembrance, we let it be. And so it is. Yes, thank you. What a wonderful morning. Let's sing our closing song together. Yes. hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Our inspirational service is at 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our podcast listeners. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.